Michael Hunter's next opponent is Fabio, a former UFC fighter. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel, donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work them. Now, just announced today was Michael Hunter's next opponent. Initially, the card was supposed to be Alexander Usyk versus Carlos Takam as the main event in Maryland. But now, Usyk has some type of bicep injury, they're saying. And Devin Haney versus Antonio Moran is bumped up to the main event. Devin Haney, a recent Eddie Hearn matchroom signing. Now, Michael Hunter's opponent, as you guys see on DAZN's website, I'll pull it up for you guys, was announced. And I looked at the press release and what whatnot. And I made a live stream and I mentioned this. You see, it says confirmed. Michael Hunter II versus Fabio Maldonado, May 25th on that Devin Haney card, Maryland, you know, MGM National Harbor, and you can get tickets, right? No biggie. But on that on that stream I did earlier today, I started thinking because I made I said, who is he fighting? You know. Because Michael Hunter was one of the rumored names for possibly Anthony Joshua. So I kind of expected, you know, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom DeZone to take care of him and maybe put him in a pretty big fight. Plus, you want to sell since Usyk's off the card and his Devin Haney versus Antonio Moran, you know, jam-packed the card. And I said, I said, who is he fighting? Fabio Maldonado. And then later today, I'm out here in Brooklyn for the Wilder fight, Wilder Brazil. I kept thinking of the name and I'm like, where do I know that name? Where do I know that name? And then it dawned on me. Michael Hunter is fighting a former UFC fighter in this fight on the Devin Haney. So this opponent actually used to fight in the UFC. That's why I remember his name. At first I was, you know, I was just joking around like who's Maldonado. But that's what it is. Michael Hunter moved from cruiserweight and he says, I'm here to stay at heavyweight. Whatever, whoever it is, there's a lot of avenues for me. Looking at a number of big fights out there, and I will take on anyone. I'm always in the gym. I'm real. You know, this is the pretty much the press release, right? So his opponent, Maldonado, used to fight in the UFC. Now, the thing that struck me as odd is this is the main event. Haney versus Moran, who his opponent, Devin Haney's a rising star, but not many people know his opponent, Antonio Moran. They say it's for the WBC International. Most people thought that Devin Haney was going to get an actual title fight. But this looks like the card that they're putting together with uh, Matchroom, right? Now, the thing with him fighting this UFC opponent is this. I remember him from the UFC because he fought Fedor, he fought Rampage. I think he was at light heavyweight and he might have moved up. I didn't even know he was a boxer. But I remember he had fights canceled because he had pulled out of a fight. So the more I start thinking, I'm like, that's not necessarily good. So look, I pulled it up for you guys. I remember, I don't, I think this was more than just this fight. So look, Maldonado about scrapped. Fabio, Fabio Maldonado has been forced to pull out of UFC 142 bout with Kayo due to an injury sustained in training. And I think this happened a couple of times for him. And then, you know, if that's not bad enough, Fabio, he admitted, I remember this. He admitted to doing PEDs. Before the Fedor fight, as you guys can see, Fabio Maldonado admits he'll be doping before he fights Fedor. You know, because I remember this sent shockwaves through the UFC. Right. Let me pull it up for you guys. BJPin.com, you know, trusted MMA site. Fabio Maldonado admits to PED usage in the UFC plans to fight for Fedor. Look, and that's him. Recent news broke that MMA legend Fedor will be returning to MMA in front of the native Russian fans. 
when he fights UFC veteran Fabio Maldonado under the Fight Night's global banner in June. Ahead of the fight, a shocking detail emerged that there would be no PED testing ahead of the night of the fight. Following that announcement, Maldonado admitted to Bloody Elbow, and they cited it, that he had been using PEDs during the last stretch of his UFC career and that he plans to do so in his upcoming fight against Fedor. <laughs> what? Because I remember this was a big, like, this was a big deal because who just openly says, yo, I'm about to be juiced up, right? Fabio Maldonado plans to use DHEA. Everybody hit the D-E-C-K, the D-E-A, you know, D-H-E-A for Fader match admits use in the <laughs> the UFC. So the more I start, <laughs> listen, the more I start thinking about this cat, I was like, damn, I remember he had this whole PED scandal. All right. Now, I didn't even know he was boxing, first of all. That's that's one thing. But he's he's got to be up there because he's a UFC like OG. Right. Let's see how old he is. So he's six foot one. He fought at light heavy. See, like I said, light heavyweight and heavyweight. Where's his age? He's 39 years old. So, yeah, so he's pushing 40 and he was in, enthralled in a controversy where he admitted to PED usage. Now, when I told you guys before that I didn't understand some of the decision making process at the DAZN headquarters, this is those times. This is what I'm talking about. First of all, his whatever he did in the UFC is the UFC. However, this Michael Hunter is facing a guy who is a UFC fighter who I guess started boxing or maybe he mixed. I don't know. I don't really know what his boxing back. I just know him from UFC. Simultaneously becoming a mixed martial artist, Maldonado professionally competed as a boxer in his native Brazil. Um, made his debut in April 2008. Okay, so he he made a debut in 2008 as a boxer, record of 22 and 0 with an impressive 21. But you know he's fighting in his home town. Maldonado last boxed professionally in June 2010. After his release from the UFC, he returned to professional boxing. He won a return fight over Robson Bamboo. Within less than a month, he proceeded to knock out Alessandro Bernardo. In the first round with one punch. Again, these aren't like prime boxers. Let's see if it has his boxing record. Okay, so he fought Oscar Rivas, who is fighting Dillian White. And he's coming off a loss from December of last year. Right? Before that, he fought in September one time. And he fought one time in 2017. And two times in 2016. And then, look, he didn't fight for six years in here from 2010. But anyway, I don't want to get too involved in this. So this is a guy. He's from the UFC, confirmed, and he admitted PED use. Now, the reason, like I said, this is some of the decisions I don't make. I don't understand that DAZN is making for their cards. For for starters, Usyk was supposed to fight Carlos Takam in Maryland. I have no idea why. I don't know if that fight would have resonated off the heels of another fight in the DMV. Swift Jared Hurd versus um j-rock which was an excellent fight did over 2.1 million views at its peak wilder's fighting this week i'm in brooklyn for that particular fight and then Usyk versus tackham which i don't think was moving tickets but whatever they're saying he's injured cool so you replace that Usyk goes to a different card then you put a fight that was on the undercard of Usyk with devin haney and you bump that up to a main event and then michael hunter who I thought he would get a bigger fight considering he was a legit after Gerald Miller failed a drug test, which we're going to get to. So it ties in after he failed a drug test. I really thought they would take care of Michael Hunter in that regard and pro probably give him a, you know, a solid name because he's trying to climb up the ranks and, and show his worth. And he beat Bacoli and uh, Ustinov. So he was on a trend of, you know, fighting some decent veterans here. Now he's fighting a former UFC fighter who's pulled out. I showed you at least one fight, but I, I'm pretty sure there were more that he pulled out with injuries and different stuff, right? He had, I think he had like kind of a history, but whatever. Pulled out of some fights, but more importantly, has admitted to past 
PED uses. This, I can't understand these decisions from DAZN. He admits he will be doping before he fights. The reason why I'm saying this for DAZN particularly is PDs, you know, in combat sports or whatnot. They just had a, a okay, first of all, they just had Usyk, which was the main event of this very card. And he pulled out because his bicep was torn. But before that, June 1st, you know, that card, Gerald Miller had all these drugs in his system. HGH, EPO, GW, 1516. And that card got got messed up and scrambled up. Anthony Joshua now fighting Andy Ruiz. So to me, it makes it makes it a very questionable decision to pick a former UFC fighter who activity has been sketch, has pulled out of UFC fights, is almost 40, and he's more importantly admitted to openly doing PEDs in the past. I now I don't know the details if this fight in the boxing um, is being drug tested. But what I mean, you wouldn't want something to happen with this event too. When Usyk versus his original opponent or the original main event got compromised because of Boos, Usyk had an injury. So to me, I don't understand chances like this. Why would you chance your card being ruined again by something? You know, you got to look at people's track record. He openly admitted this is not like. People speculated that he did PEDs. I remember him and I remember this in the UFC. So I just I, I question that type of decision making. Why you would put Michael Hunter in there with Maldonado, which he doesn't really gain much from that anyway, because it's not like a known boxer, heavyweight boxer that everyone's checking for. But beyond that, why would you chance it with somebody unless there's no drug testing? I don't know, but. I wouldn't test it, you know, even if it's like commission testing, you know, I wouldn't test it, especially when the main event was already compromised once. And you just went through that whole ordeal with Gerald Miller and the car being scrambled. Just a very weird decision by Eddie Hearn, rematch room and DAZN and stuff to put this fight together out of all fights. You know, I'm pretty sure the heavyweight division, there's other people that will fight Michael Hunter. It's not like he's undefeated and, you know, he, he lost. He's a former cruiserweight. I'm sure they could have found somebody, you know, a Bacoli rematch or anything. But it's just weird that they would put this in the hands of, you know, a 40-year-old UFC fighter who's openly admitted in the past to being on PEDs. I can't understand that decision making. So this is proof, more proof, more evidence of what I'm saying. It just seems weird because Devin Haney's main event, Devin Haney, is a, he's the one, the fucking contender, but his opponent's not really big. You don't want anything else to happen to this card, especially after Usyk, like, you know, fizzled out his fight. But, hey, I just want to let you guys know because I remember the name because I kept thinking about it. I was like, who's Maldonado? Who's Maldonado? And that's why I remember because he's a former UFC fighter. So weird, weird matchmaking here. Let me know what you guys think if you have any additional information on Maldonado. But I, th that's what I remember from him in the UFC. Because I remember they, Dana White, a lot of people thought he was going to get cut after he lost. Because he lost to uh, Glover, Texaria, or whatever. And it was a... Yeah, he, he had a couple of losses. So people thought like, oh shit, you're on the way out. Dana White going to cut you. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, son and all. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.